Hello and welcome to DV247. We're taking a look at the stage source uh, PA speakers from Line 6 today. Um, there's a separate video taking a look at the Stagescape M20D mixer as well, uh, which is going to be a link underneath the video just down there. Um, so take a look at that too, because they do work in conjunction with each other, which we'll explore later. Uh, Simon Jones is here from Line 6 to chat with us about stage source and to show us the unique aspects of these speakers um, and the way that they can work in a multitude of different applications, whether you be someone who's just in need of a general PA system, whether you're someone who needs something for a full band, for an acoustic performance, which we'll be showing you today, or indeed if you need them simply to be monitors. Um, so I guess the first thing to ask Simon is sort of the, the, the theory behind the design here and the sort of speaker that you, were look, that you wanted to make when you put this together in the first place. So Stage Source really was developed out of the need for the musician, performing musician. If uh, you've ever been um, in a situation where you, you know, now you've, you've been playing, you've been practicing, and you're putting your first band together, sure. um, you know, PA is the last thing from your, um, your thought process or particularly what you're going to spend your money on. But you know, your PA is a critical element of your live performance, right? If, uh, you know, if your live performance sounds bad and you know, speakers being a primary part of that, of then all that hard work, all that recording, all the CDs or whatever, you know, all your songs and material, you're not going to be able to sort of publicize them and it just, just people aren't going to resonate with it unless it sounds good live. Sure. Um, so PA and particularly speakers are an important part. But how do you choose the right PA? Because the average musician or as a musician, you know that your needs are going to vary. Um, whether that's you just need it for rehearsal or you just primarily need it for sort of backline and a bit of mic, or you need it for performing in a coffee shop, mm -hmm. or some of your performances go to a larger venue where you need a couple of thousand watt PA system. Um, what we really wanted to do is try to accommodate all of those things and build some versatility in the speaker and the way that it scales and you can add other speaker systems to it to build a bigger system. So you can start with one element, one speaker, and you can do a heck of a lot of stuff and it will get you a long way, but also it's very, very easy to add other elements to it, other speakers and the subwoofer and you know the speakers in the monitor mode, you can add monitors to your system. So as your needs evolve and they grow, then that first investment you make when you go in and buy your first PA system, it's still, re it's still relevant and it's still valid. Right? It's not as though you're going to have to sell, oh, that was our first PA system, we've got to go and sell that and buy another one now. Sure. No, you keep it, because that, that, you know, the journey of that speaker should last you through your whole career. Well, until you get to the level where you know, the PA is really somebody else's business at that sure. point. Right? One of the things uh, we noticed when we first got the speakers into the building is quite how robust they're built. Um, the grill and the cabinet themselves are all incredibly sturdy. Um, and there's also, for the sake of kind of comfortable uh, portability, there are kind of there is a handle around the side which can be locked in and used as a kickstand as well uh, for monitoring. Um, but more than anything, it, it does have an incredibly solid build. And kind of that suggests to me this is supposed to be used not just as an installed sort of speaker, but actually, but actually on the go and, and for bands who are touring too. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, we wanted to, if you're going to have a PA speaker, I mean, if you're going to make that purchase, it's going to last you a lifetime or your career. We want it to be solid. We want it to be well built. All the professional speaker systems out there are made of you know heavy duty plywood. So we went straight to that construction. So it's a plywood box and it's a heavy duty grill. There's a screen behind it to stop stuff getting in and sort of uh, water getting onto the components. Um, yeah, you mentioned we've got a we've got the handle on the side here really comfortable, it's the little location on the front, it's all very well balanced around the center of gravity. Um, there's also other sort of little bits and pieces here, that handle doubles as a kickstand for one of the monitor positions, but putting this thing horizontally, these things flip out, you've also got a, a 30 degree um, six, a 30 degree and a 60 degree capability in its horizontal position if you're using it as a floor wedge, as a monitor. Um, <clears throat> One of the other unique things that we did is rather than go with a traditional 12-inch woofer and a horn, uh, a compression, horn-loaded compression driver, we went with two tens, right? So it's, a, it's actually a Diapolito design. So you've got a 10 here and 10 here and the waveguide here, right? And, and, and there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, one is that we actually get more radiating surface area than a 12-inch. It's about 30% more. Um, so you do get, you get a heck of a lot of low frequency extension, but it's really dynamic. So you've got less moving mass on each of the cones than a big, you know, than a 12. The power handling is great because now you've got two voice coils that radiate all the heat and soak up all that power. 
One of them is low frequency to mid, the other one's just mid only, and then we've got the high frequency. So technically it's a three-way device. Each is powered by its own amplifier, so it's triamped to ultimately give us a 1400 watt system. Great. Um, the other thing about 10-inch speakers, they give us a lot of flexibility at where we cross over and transition into this compression driver. Mm -hmm. Compression drivers aren't particularly musical, right? Cones are. They sound great with acoustic instruments and voice, right? right? So using a 10-inch allows us to actually cross over into that higher frequency. So that really critical vocal region is mostly reproduced by the cone rather than the compression driver here which actually gives it a really, really sweet musical sound, okay. particularly when you can actually use it for lots of different applications. The other thing about the 10s is that they are less directional at high frequencies. So we've chose a very wide coverage, right? So if you're gonna just use one speaker, stick it in the corner of that coffee shop, at 100 degrees coverage at the side, then everybody gets the same acoustic frequency response rather than, you know, your whole audience doesn't sit in front of you. So we've really designed it so everybody gets a balanced tone, no matter where they sit within that 100 degree pattern. And then it's narrow vertically, 50, so you're not throwing sound up to the ceiling or the floor, where you get sort of reflections and things and it's wasted energy. So there's some critical elements to the design there. So before we plug in and actually take a look at the various tone shaping options that we have um, through the side control panels, um, let's have a quick look around the back and see what's there. So there are, yeah, there's two panels here. We've got a side panel here on the L3T. We also sell an L3M that doesn't have the side panel here. So if you don't need to have that uh, input capability and you want to use it primarily as a PA speaker, then that, you can, that, that product's available. Um, and in that product, the L3T and the L3M, both of them have this um, panel here, which is really the PA business end of it. Um, where you've got a line input, you've got a stereo auxiliary line input in here. So if you wanted to play, um, you know, stick your iPod or something in there. There's a button here, feedback suppression. So whatever you're coming from, going into the speaker, you can apply 12 bands of okay. feedback suppression in there, which works on a similar principle to the one in the Stagescape um, product. We've got a loop through output. So if we we're going to daisy chain or we just wanted to send the input straight to an output, uh, in the input of another speaker, we can do that. Or we can take the mix output, so the combination of these things. And if we had the T and the side input panel, we could take all that out th there as well. Um, we've got this sort of in out here, and we've talk, spoken about Line 6 Link. This is our proprietary digital audio network. So if we were going to connect other um, stage source speakers or connect our uh, Stagescape mixer, then we'd use this digital audio connection here. The little number here tells you, you know, what number it is in the chain, or whether it's getting left signal or right signal or both right. for mono. <clears throat> um, and then, you know, here's the here's the real sort of secret to it. And we've got a huge amount of DSP in this product. And we've got you need a lot of DSP just to do feedback suppression. But one of the things that makes this unique for each application, um, in that we can actually change the fundamental system tuning of the speaker. And when I say that, it's not just applying EQ. It's not just like a high frequency or low frequency EQ bump that a lot of other speakers have. We're actually changing the crossover point right. and we're changing the uh, attenuating the high frequency or not and, and playing around with the dynamics of the system to really, it's, it's like having a digital speaker processor. Well, it is in it. So, you know, there are some external, you know, system processors, but it's, it's built in and optimizing it. So it, it sort of comes default in reference PA mode. Mm -hmm. So if you're using it with a mixer, then that, that's what you get. Flat response, maximum sound pressure level output. Playback, it um, provides a more sort of a sort of tonal variation for, you know, pre-recorded music. Right. In floor monitor mode, it's worth mentioning uh, the sensors built into the stage source speaker here. There's an accelerometer in there, so basically it knows the orientation of the speaker, whether it's standing upright or horizontal. If it's horizontal, the accelerometer, uh, and you switch it on, it pulls the accelerometer and it says, oh, it automatically puts it into floor monitor mode here. Um, and in floor monitor mode, it counteracts some of the, um, the low frequency buildup um, coupling with the floor. Uh, and things like that. So it really sort of works as a, you know, optimizes a floor monitor would. In keyboard mode, acoustic guitar mode, and electric guitar mode, these are our backline, this is what we call our backline mode. So if you're going to use it as a keyboard monitor, we roll the crossover point upwards a little bit. Acoustic guitar mode, similarly, we take low away some of the low frequency boominess. And in electric guitar mode, we actually emulate a 2x12 open back cabinet. So if you're going to use it with um, one of our HD500 or pods, then this particular mode here, and you went out in the, in the live setting out of the pod, then this is like a 1400 watt 2x12 cabinet. Okay. 
One of the little other little things in these what we call the back line modes, keyboard, acoustic guitar and electric guitar, um, if the accelerometer says I'm standing upright and uh, there's, an, there's a sensor in the pole cup here so it knows whether it's on a pole or not. Mm -hmm. So what happens is in the back line mode and it's standing on the floor as your back line you know, guitar cabinet or keyboard monitor would be upright, um, it says I'm standing on the floor, I'm upright and it uh, applies what we call virtual tilt back. So it'll actually apply a bit of a delay and re-time align the components so actually steer the main axis of the sound output upwards. So it's sort of virtually tilting the cabinet back. So that's a that's a cool little cool little trick there. In the electric guitar mode as well, as far as the HD 500 goes, then we can take the Line 6 link output and we can go straight in here digitally. Um, and if we connect another speaker here via Line 6 link, it automatically routes the um, stereo effects to the other hmm. speaker. So you've got a you know a 2800 watt backline stereo system which also works linking another stage source speaker um, to it um, if you're using it in any of these other modes as well. So you go left and right in here with your back backing or using the stereo modes on the effects when we get to the side panel, then it will route left and right signals appropriately just via one connection. If you have another speaker on the other side that's a T as well, then you can have a Line 6 link back to this one, right? Okay. So they're linked to each other and all the inputs on the other speaker are actually fed into the channel as well. Sure. So basically what you have is you've got two speakers, all the inputs are shared over the, over the two speakers or the two channels. Left and right are distributed to the appropriate speaker. So you've got a 2800 watt PA speaker with multiple inputs, digital inputs, which sort of brings me around to this, you know, the L3T. What are those digital inputs you share? Well, if you've got a T, then you'll have this input panel here which is um, two channels and say it's a, it's a digital mixer, right? If you have the, another speaker connected, then ultimately you've got eight channels to put into this system. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea then is that you can sort of scale up your PA system. Here's one speaker. Maybe you're, you know, your other fellow musician's got another speaker. And so you each own one of these things. You play solo gigs, you come together, you put them together, you share the whole PA system. You've got 2800 watt PA system there. Mm. So you sort of, you can build up like that. Anyway, so to get some nuts and bolts of what that in, those input channels are, you can see we've got two channel strips here, channel one, channel two. We've got a 20 dB pad that we can pump in there. We've got a gain. Um, we've got a three band EQ with a sweepable mid here. Uh, modulation, which is sort of like a vocal double E chorus effect type thing. Right. Reverb. And then per channel here, we can gauge the 12 band feedback suppressor as well. Great. And then on, we've got an acoustic modeling on the top here. And the idea of the modeling here it adds, you know, you're going into the system with a, uh, you've got a piezoelectric uh, pickup and it adds the body resonance because the piezo just picks up the vibration of the string and sometimes can sound a little thin. So the modeling it allows you to add sort of warmth and characteristic to the tone of the acoustic guitar. So a typical application here, we could have a guitar and we could plug that little fella in here. Um, and um, <coughs> I'm not going to torture you with my singing, but you know, say I was a singer, or maybe you were the singer. We were a duo, and I'd plug my uh, microphone in here, and you know, we'd have a two-channel setup, 1400 watt PA, 100 degrees of coverage. Everybody in the room sort of gets a fair balance of everything. Um, so, if you just like to play a little bit for me, sure. So, sort of bring the gain up a little bit. And you can hear. It. Tone there, you know, we can add a bit of high frequency or not. You can hear that's maybe a little bit overcooked, but you can hear what it does. A little bit of reverb, a little bit overcooked. And then the body resonance here, I'm just going to switch it on and off. Put the feedback suppressor on. So with all the things, it's just sort of dial to taste and, you know, very quickly you could dial that in, have the old mic going and we've got enough PA for, uh, you know, a fairly reasonable size audience. As I said, you know, we can scale it up, we can add more speakers, 
we could have a third speaker in our network and we could put it on the floor horizontally and it would say in this little network, I'm horizontal, I'm a monitor, therefore I need to get both left and right signals. And that would be our fold bang. Um, there's a little, there's a little, there's a little, one extra little feature here I didn't mention, the stereo link. That say we were going in here with a stereo signal, say a stereo keyboard, mm -hmm. or even the output of a mixer, the stereo output of a mixer. I could engage the stereo link and then everything in this red band here controls both left and right channels simultaneously. Okay. Right. So say I was coming out of a mixer, or maybe this was from my iPod, and I had this network of Line 6 link enabled speakers, and I could actually use this to tweak and tune the whole system if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Or if I had a, it was a keyboard, it was my stereo keyboard monitor, then you know I didn't have to make sure everything matched. So those are the Stasor speakers, uh, the L3T in this case, there's also the L3M available. Um, again, the, the, one of the best things to do is to actually hear them for yourself. So if you're looking for a new PA speaker um, and the features here make a lot of sense to you as a performing musician, uh, then come down to the DV247 stores, hear them for yourself, possibly in conjunction as well with the Stagescape M20D uh, mixer as well. As I say, there's a video for that just below this video here. Um, either way, uh, we think you'll be incredibly impressed, so come down and try them out for yourself.